Hello, my name is Graham Brown, and this is Escape the Cubicle. If you like these podcasts, if you like this audio, then go and check out escapethecubiclebook.com, and you can sign up to my weekly update, where what I'm doing is I am publishing this book, and to publish this book, I'm going to publish one excerpt from the book every week, make it available on my blog and to my newsletter subscribers. So go ahead and get a chapter of that as and when I publish. It's an ongoing work in progress document, living document, which you can be part of. So give me some feedback on it. If you're a newsletter subscriber, then shoot me a reply. So today I want to talk about possibly what is the biggest challenge facing entrepreneurs. And that is how you use your time. Because being an entrepreneur, you have the choice to use your time extremely effectively or waste it completely. As a salaried employee, it's a little bit different. You don't have the extremes. You can't completely waste your time because you have a boss who's going to make sure that you're being effective. And you can't completely be effective because you have a boss that is making sure that you're being effective, right? So you're within these... this top and tail of what's possible of effectiveness as a salaried employee, but you take away the ceiling and the floor and you become an entrepreneur. So you can either completely use it well or waste it totally. So I want to talk about that. And I think one of the problems with being an entrepreneur, the challenge I should say, is that we are faced with so many different activities. We have a remit of Unlike any other job remit, we are, you know, the website designer, we are the podcast creator, we are the product developer, we are the marketer, the CEO, etc. So there's so many things that you could do, where do you focus? And starting a business, especially, the focus has to be on this magical moment, which is shipping. Let's talk about what shipping is. Shipping means getting your product into the hands of a paying customer. So that means talking to customers, building a marketing funnel, partnership selling. Those are all shipping activities. Everything else, which I'll call pre-shipping, business planning, logos, ideation, building your product, all those kind of things, that's pre-shipping. Now, As an entrepreneur, you should focus all your energy on shipping. So you should focus all your energy in getting that product into the hands of a paying customer. Because when you don't have a paying customer, you don't exist. You have nothing. You don't even have a business yet. So everything from designing a logo to finding an office to setting up your website is irrelevant. Now that sounds harsh. But this is the difference between an entrepreneur and a wantrepreneur. An entrepreneur does the activities that brings customer. A wantrepreneur, however, does the activities that are comfortable. And what's uncomfortable? Uncomfortable is getting out there and asking for money. And why money is really important, even one dollar, is because getting a customer to pay is the moment of truth. Steve Jobs was often quoted as saying customers don't know what they want. However, the reality is that customers don't know what they want until they open their wallets. When you ask a customer to open their wallet and pay you even one dollar, that is the moment of truth. That is where all their interest, their, you know, what they say falls away and it's showtime. Either they buy the product or they don't. There's no skirting around the issue. Asking people if they're interested or surveying people, it doesn't matter compared to whether or not they're prepared to buy. You know, everybody is interested in owning a Ferrari, but how many actually do? Precisely. There's a lot of reasons why people don't own Ferraris. And that comes to the fore. That's made real by asking them to buy one. And it's the same with your product. There'll be a lot of reasons why people won't want to buy your product and asking them to buy will make all those reasons come to the fore however asking if they're interested will be very different it's like are you interested in buying are you interested in owning i should say a ferrari it's either 
you know, that will give you a very false positive as to what your market wants and will demand from you. But asking them to buy is a simple yes or no. So asking to buy is what I call hustle. And hustle in a way is like getting out and asking a boy or a girl for a date. You know, you can work out, wear your best clothes, you can do all that stuff, practice your swag, your chat up lines, your pick up lines. But if you don't actually do it, you don't get a date. It doesn't happen by accident, unless you're really lucky. And if you can't ask for business, you'll never make money. So that's the hustle. It's the hard part. You know, designing websites, putting together an app, putting together a plan, these are easy compared to the hustle. And people think that the hustle happens naturally. You know, you create this stuff and it's so good that people want to find out and they'll come to you, knock on your door and the hustle will happen itself. It doesn't. You know, when you make a product, you've got to get out there and you've got to hustle. That's what makes you a successful entrepreneur. You've got to ship if you want to make this a successful business. You can't avoid the issue. You've got to ask that girl or that boy out on a date. So there are easier ways to do this than a straightforward do or die. And I think, you know, this comes from building... Um, what they call in lean startup terms, a minimum viable product, an MVP, which is the smallest version of your product that you can put out there that somebody will pay money for. In the date analogy, it's not like saying, let's get married or let's get in the sack. It's like saying, let's go for a coffee. You don't ask the first person, let's get married. You know, you may have to build up weeks and weeks and months to get to that stage but you can't ask that straight off the bat. And it's the same with your product. You can't go out and expect people to get married to your product straight away. So the easier way to do it is to just ask them out for a coffee. Hey, let's go to Starbucks and have a coffee. That's the equivalent of launching a minimum viable product. And you do this for two reasons. One, to see if people are interested in this product you know, they're either going to buy or they're not going to buy. And secondly, to get the ball rolling as soon as possible. So the sooner you launch, the sooner you learn. If you wait weeks or months, or in some cases, years to launch your product, what happens is, is by the time you launch that product, you know, or when you launch that product, everything you've assumed about the customer is going to be wrong. So you've spent weeks, months, or years, and a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of heartache, and a lot of yourself invested in that product. And the customer just turns around and say no. That's like going up to a guy or a girl and saying, hey, let's get married. They don't know anything about you, and you don't know anything about them. So even if they say yes, it could be the wrong person. Asking them out for a coffee is a much lower risk way of launching a business and building a product. So an MVP is a simpler and cheaper idea of your, sorry, it's a very, let me start again. An MVP is a simpler and cheaper version of your ideal product. Now, by doing this and getting out quickly and getting out in days rather than weeks or months, you get feedback and that feedback helps you improve. So when you ask the guy or the girl out for coffee, you, you have a chat and you find out you're both into dogs or you're both into triathlon or you're both into playing guitar. And then you've got a starting point, right? So the next time I say, hey, let's go for a run together or let's go to you know walk a dog together or whatever. So that's the equivalent of getting feedback on your MVP because then you say, ah, this is what they like. This is what they don't like. I can focus more on that and less on that. So you're de-risking the whole process. And you may say, well, $1, you know, I can't make a business out of $1. If you're selling the product for $1, $10, whatever. Well, it's the same. You know, you can't build a family over a coffee. But that's your ultimate goal, right? That's what it's about. You have to start somewhere. And the difference between zero and one dollars and one is bigger, sorry, than one and a thousand. So what I'm saying is getting a customer to pay one dollar is harder 
than it is getting a customer to pay for a thousand. Because once you've got them to pay for one, they were more likely to pay for a thousand. Because the difference between zero and one is huge. It's the same with asking the girl or the guy out for the date. The, you know, if you ask a girl or a guy out for a coffee, you know, if they say yes, then they are more likely to get married with you than somebody who says no, right? Or getting them to that point of asking for the coffee is harder than getting them married. That's the logic of it. That's how it works out. That's what I'm saying with your product. Going from zero to one is the biggest step. That's what launching is all about. And that's why nothing happens until you ship. You can mess around, do everything else with your business. Logos, websites, lawyers, accountants, all that stuff. It doesn't matter. Because until you get to that first base, which is coffee at Starbucks, everything else is hypothetical. Everything else is assumption. You could be chatting to this girl or this guy. Nothing's going to happen until you get them to make the first commitment. And that's shipping on your behalf. And people think, well, you know, I can't do this until I have a better product. It's rubbish. You can do this now. You don't have to wait for a better product. You know, done is better than perfect. It doesn't have to be a wise decision or a perfect one. Just make one. If you're waiting for perfect, you'll be waiting for the rest of your life. Just face your fears and launch because the cost of being wrong is less than the cost of doing nothing. My name's Graham Brown. You've been listening to Escape the Cubicle. This is all about designing a life and a business for lifestyle entrepreneurs. If you like what you've heard, if you like this article, go and check out escapethecubiclebook.com where you'll find a more extensive version of this article with charts and so on. As well as, as well as not forgetting an opportunity to join me on this journey. I'm writing this book every week sharing with you updates on how to become a successful lifestyle entrepreneur. If you want to get those updates by newsletter, I send it to my newsletter subscribers every week. Sign up on the Get Updates box at the bottom of every post. My name is Graham Brown. This is Escape the Cubicle.